Roadblocks is a company that provides a platform for video game developers to go on their platform, develop games, and then provide them to gamers around the world. It's quite a successful platform, and they remind me of a YouTube. It's like YouTube for video games. And I'd like to tell you more about that. I'd like to tell you about Roadblocks and, and my analysis in Roadblocks. They had their earnings this week, actually yesterday. Big news, and I can share what I what I saw in their in their uh, earnings release, and then where the stock went uh, for this company. My name is Victor. I have an MBA, a lot of business experience, and I like to share my process and my investing analysis in companies. Uh, in this case here, I'm going to be looking at roadblocks. They had their earnings yesterday. Their stock dropped more than 20%. So I want to see what their earnings were all about and make my own independent judgment on this company and share that with you. Now let's get into roadblocks. Sound investing should follow a process. And I have a process that I created for myself that I'm very comfortable with. I encourage you to create a process that you're very comfortable with. My process involves four key questions followed by a decision to buy, hold, or sell. The first question, do I want to be part owner in this company? Do I really like the industry? Do I believe the management team is operating the company well? Do I think debt is under control and less than three times EBITDA? And I want to discount on the stock because the only reason I invest in stocks is to see my investment go up in value. And the best way to do that is get a discount when I buy the shares so I can see that share price go up. Based on the answers, I buy, hold, or sell this particular stock. Roadblocks has an interesting story. Again, they're a lot like YouTube. YouTube doesn't create videos. They just create this platform and, and video game, or excuse me, video developers around the world create content. And they put it on YouTube. YouTube benefits because they can advertise on their site or they can charge subscriptions for people that buy the premium service. Uh, the content developers, they have a place to take their content that's very affordable. So everybody wins in the YouTube model. And that's very similar to Roadblocks. Roadblocks does not hire an army of video game developers. They actually just partner with little entrepreneurs or in some cases, more larger entrepreneurs who create games and bring them over the Roadblocks platform. So Roadblocks can benefit in getting revenues in the form of road bucks that, you know, the gamers will spend in game. And then they share those revenues with these partners, these developers that develop the video games. So I really like their story. I think it's a story that fits the time. A lot of businesses like this really work. It's, it's profitable for, for all people, our parties involved and roadblocks should benefit uh, from, from this type of model in the long run. Over the last four years, Roadblocks really grew well. They grew 130% over four years collectively, which is phenomenal. That's great. Great job, Roadblocks. Now, their earnings came out yesterday and their stock price dropped, but I'm not quite sure. Revenue went up uh, 15%. They provided positive net cash flow from operations. Daily active users went up. Hours engaged went up. They're also selling into categories that are uh, more promising to them. They have historically sold the categories of very young players, like 13-ish, but now they're moving up to their, their category of 18 to 20-year-olds has really grown, which that type of gamer has more money to spend. They're also beginning to advertise on their site or on, during their games, and big advertisers are coming into Roadblocks and creating these experiences within Roadblocks. So I look at the earnings release, and I thought that the company is doing great. Uh, they're growing. Their customers are happy. More customers are coming to their platform. So overall, I thought the earnings was good. The, the stock dropped. So um, that was very interesting to me that it dropped so much. Uh, I did my own analysis and established my own opinion, which is that the company actually is doing really well. What is working for Roadblocks is, again, that variety of developers they have over a thousand individual developers the biggest one developing and, and co-sharing revenues with roadblocks above 25 million dollars is what that video game developer is earning and then the developer that would be in the 1000th you know spot you know in line they develop and, and earn about sixty four thousand dollars so there's a big variation of, of video game developers and sophistication and so forth but again, that's what works for Roadblocks. 
many of those titles are going to be huge successes. Many of those titles are going to be complete, complete failures. The risk is not on roadblocks. The risk is on that individual developer. Those individual de developers, they really know their stuff. They know where, you know, uh, gamers and players will want the video games to be developed. And that's a very powerful force, I think, for roadblocks. And roadblocks will become very, very big. I believe roadblocks is an acquisition target. Uh, I think a, a list of companies like Meta, Alphabet, uh, Apple would really be interested in having roadblocks as part of their company to bring over the big revenue that they're producing, as well as this type of this, this uh, player community would be a huge community for them to have access to and sell additional products and advertise and do business with. Roadblocks has a strong balance sheet, mainly because they have a lot of cash and short-term investments, and they don't have a lot of debt. They have, actually have more cash and short-term investments than they do debt. So they have net zero debt. I believe Roadblocks is currently discounted 50%. After that big stock price drop, I believe you can, or I could uh, get a discount of 50% on this stock. Um, let me take you through the valuation. I go two different methods. One is the free cash flow method, and the other is the 10 times sales valuation method. Let me go through free cash flows first. So I estimate that for the current year, they really are producing around 210 million dollars of free cash flow and over the next four years those cash flows are going to grow the company's grown real quick by 25 percent all years after year four will be a total of 10.8 billion dollars of free cash i'm going to discount a nice high weighted average cost of capital since they are a smaller company um, and based on all these cash flows that we expect in the future discounted by 10 percent the current value, the net present value of all those cash flows is $7.6 billion. I'm going to add the cash and short-term investments they have on the balance sheet to the valuation. I'm going to take away debt. I get to an equity value of $8.8 .8 billion, but the market cap is $17.9 billion. So using the cash flow method, it actually yields that there is a uh, premium on the stock of 57% that the cash flows need to be higher in order for this uh, valuation to either break even or sell at a discount. So that's one method. Now the company is growing. They're in a category that's really valuable. If you follow the Activision acquisition from Microsoft, Activision was acquired for 70 or $90 billion. And so that was a very valuable company. These guys are at you know 18 billion market cap. So I looked at sales and I analyzed the most current quarter that's taken the quarter times four and uh, determined that they're at $2.7 billion as a run rate. I think that uh, a company like an Alphabet, Meta, uh, Apple, you name it, uh, somebody who would want this, this particular business would easily pay 24 times sales, 24 times this number. And that gives us a valuation of the company of $65 billion. And it would be a per share price of $107 per share. Again, Activision, I think it sold for about $90 billion. And I believe Activision is kind of part of the past and not part of the future. Activision is kind of like the console video game developer. I think they've got really interesting games. But the future is about roadblocks, what they're doing. So I think I would think that roadblocks is even going to be more valuable than Activision. So I take that valuation and I put that into my model here. And if you look at that share price of $107 of value using the 10x sales valuation compared to their current stock price, you actually get a very significant discount of 263%. And what I do is I blend these two numbers. I put more weight in free cash flows. Uh, two parts free cash flows, one part 10x sales. And I get to that blended discount of 50% on roadblocks. So let me go through my process and scorecard roadblocks. First, do I want to be part, part owner in the company? Yes. And I want to be part of this industry. Terrific company. And the management team 
is really the best in the business. They really know video gaming. They know this type of, of business model. So I really like their management team. They have zero debt, so well below the 3X EBITDA. And there's a discount offered on the stock. So therefore, I'm going to continue to buy shares in Roadblocks. I actually bought shares yesterday after the big drop. I did my analysis and then bought shares. Looking at where the stock is traded for Roadblocks, it's been up and down, up and down, up and down. And what, you know, volatility is, in my opinion, is our friend. Volatility enables me to buy shares at a discount, for example, at the end of 2022. Um in the middle of 2023, and right now, $29.46. My valuation is $44.08, and I have an opportunity to buy roadblocks at a discount. Doing analysis, following a process, it really enables me to invest when I believe the stock price is, is discounted, but it really starts with investing in the company that I want to be part owner in, company I believe in, a management team that I believe in a sound balance sheet, and then followed by that discount. So I'm glad that I'm buying shares of road. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it interesting and learned a few things. Remember, investing, sound investing should follow a process. Uh, I shared my process. You got to determine what your process is, what you're comfortable with, and, and how you want to go about your own investments. Um, my analysis, you know, I've, I've, uh, taken some textbook evaluation methods and I've taken some styles from YouTube that I've learned and I've also read up on investors. It's my process and my evaluation method to reach a point where I'm comfortable making investments. I encourage you to do the same thing. You know, learn a process that you're comfortable with that you can follow long term. That way you continue to improve by learning by both your successes when stocks go up and you are right but also your failures. A stock goes down, it surprises you. Learn from that opportunity um, that, that is presented to you. Thanks again for watching. Do me a big favor and like my video and consider subscribing to this channel. I'd really appreciate that. Good luck investing in 2023.